Hey, you're listening to Finding Frequency, and my name is Werner Buchert, and this is January the 4th, four days into the year, and I'm already going like, what the hell? But not in a negative way, it's just a busy day for me. It started off with a visit to um, get a medical checkup. There's all kinds of administration you have to do when you get hired, and uh, one of those is kind of going for a informal medical checkup just to, to check that I've got two ears, arms and eyes to actually sit behind my desk. It's kind of like this blanket thing. I think if you are a, a truck driver, they want to make sure that, you know, like everything is healthy and safe. But when you're a computer jockey like me, uh, they're not too hectic or too harsh. The only thing is that uh, I think it's a family thing for me is that we're all going a little bit blind because uh, I need to have glasses, which I already have. And uh, I can see things getting fuzzy around me. So, uh, yeah, I'm embracing I'm embracing that side of me. So it also gives me respect. I, I, I kind of think of it all the time because I have an uncle who uh, is, I think, in a legal state, he's blind. He can see a little bit. And um, I've realized that this inability to really see well, it's really strenuous. It, 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 sometimes it puts strain on you. And you don't realize the strain until you kind of get switched on or become aware of it. And then you realize, wow, I really have to go into the room and go fetch my, my glasses. Or, you know, especially when I have to work in smaller detail um, and you work, work away and you go like, well, why is everything so blurry and I'm having a headache? And then, boop, oh yeah, I'm not, I don't have the eyesight I used to have. But uh, that's all the joys, you know. And uh, so I am healthy. I tried to bribe the doctor, and I really did try. Well, not an actual bribe, but we did joke around where I said, can't he put me on permanent leave, on holiday? Make sure the government pays for my f- time off. He just chuckled and said, listen, sorry, my friend. You're healthy enough to work. So I'm careering towards the 10th to start my, uh, my first day back at official work. I still have to figure out what I'm going to do in my company. Uh, I want to keep it active. I don't. I don't want to close it. Um, as I mentioned, like for me, the focus now is to to really focus and concentrate in the next twelve months. See what I can achieve and how I can add value, and then uh, decide what I want to do next. And uh, I'm I'm really excited. I'm 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 uh, getting ready, but also nervous. I think I've mentioned it yesterday. You know, starting the new stuff. There's emails coming in to say, listen. Um, onboarding and all kinds of official things happening so it's strange to have this experience once again and trying to kind of slot into the flow but that being said I also had a really awesome experience today where a former colleague a colleague of mine from a firm gave me a phone call actually inviting me to come and do some business wanted me to come run a workshop I had to say no because of my current state of affairs but it was really heartening to receive a phone call and after three years I'm still kind of in the back of his mind. And he had a challenge and he looked at it and said, Van is the guy I want to get in to come do this. So I'm grateful for that. I'm really, really grateful for it. The funny thing also, the job that he wanted me to come in and do is kind of what I'm going to be doing for this company that I'm joining very soon. So I think I'm moving in the right direction. I'm feeling very positive about it and um, excited about some new adventures, new direction coming my way. Also, Marta is like really hammering away next door and, and, and her and her new career seems like things are going sterling for her she's i can hear the meetings our walls are very thin and i can hear uh, upbeat conversations deep diving you know exploring but then uh, the one person i'm a little bit worried about is our, our little son francie i think in a way and i kind of feel the same way i don't know how you feel but january in general in in poland for me, is kind of the toughest part of the year. And it's nothing to do with kind of New Year's. As I mentioned, I'm not too switched on about that, but it's like it's like the middle of winter. It's really gray outside. It's wet. It's like, that's a bit dingy. Come on. Like, I know you have to see the extraordinary everything, but I have to be honest and say like, um, come on, Poland, you can do much better than this. And I think this kind of state of affairs or state of, of uh, the current vibe here kind of gets to you a little bit, gets into your soul. I feel it too. It's like a grayness that uh, 
kind of seeps into everything because you've not done a fair amount of this and you want to kind of maneuver out of it. And you know for a fact that it's still a little way to go. So there is this kind of undertone of, of gray that sits in the back. And I think Francie is feeling a little bit of that. Also, now, the excitement of Christmas is gone. Now, what next? Lucky for him, his birthday is coming up very soon. And there's a lot of things up our sleeves that we have for him still. But uh, as we get busy with our things, we have to kind of really focus on making sure that he's okay. And I'm worried about him a little bit. I am. Because uh, after all, he is the extraordinary and the person I'm doing this podcast for. And uh, Francie, we love you. We really, really, really do love you. And we worry about you every day. We just want the best for you. So it stays a focus. And sometimes you want to spend money to make him feel happy. And it's not really about the money. It's about spending the time. And sometimes time is not on our side. And you want to say, I'll do better tomorrow. But you can't always bet on having a tomorrow. If I take uh, into account all the kind of things that happened last year, you have to be doing things now. So not getting too heavy, but uh, feeling positive, uh, extraordinary day. And as I said to Martha today, the, the thing that I took away as a extraordinary um, is, and I think you need to kind of suit yourself onto these kind of things, is um, I went to this medical institution to go get my checks done. It's a little bit of a procedural thing. Uh, you have to fill in forms like I've joked about Poland and its administration before and it lives up to that where you have to fill in forms, then sit and wait for people. And I had to go see three people in a string of kind of tests and stuff. And I, you know what? They were all friendly. They were all keen to smile at a stupid South African remark, make a joke here and there, and in general just out and out just trying even though we don't speak the same language, uh, we laughed a little bit. I tried, they tried. And it was really like something I want to take away as a really positive experience, something that I expected not to be positive. And I was pleasantly surprised by my experience there. So it's always the small things sometimes that come in and just make your day feel much better and you appreciate people around you a little bit more. So I hope you're having a similar kind of upbeat day as I'm having. If not, try and take on some audio challenges like I've done and go buy a bunch of wires and try your best, try your luck. So hopefully from a much better sounding banner, I want to say to you, thanks for listening.